Gun owners of Reddit. What is your reason to own firearms? I do shooting sports. I like shooting inanimate targets. I grew up in a small town staffed by four cops. Dialing 911 wouldn't do a thing. I was kidnapped as a child. I was very lucky my captor didn't make it far with me. Then as a young adult I was sexually assaulted. I own a gun for self-defense. I don't ever want to be a victim again. I'm a 125 pounds woman who lives alone in the country. Self-defense. Where I live there are regular home invasions that sometimes result in death and I cannot rely on police to arrive in time to protect me. By the time they arrive I will already have been dead for 20 minutes. An NBSP. Edit. Since this got a lot of interest I will provide some extra information. I live in South Africa. Out on the plots on the outskirts of a city. These plots are small-scale commercial farms with dairy cattle, orchards, butcheries, animal nurseries, etc. Homes here are quite isolated and far apart. If you scream, your neighbors won't hear you. Even in the city suburbs home invasions are common. People will drive around and if they see a homeowner outside their property they will pull up. Jump out. Put a gun against the homeowner's head and make them take them into the house and disclose all their valuables. Or they break in and catch the people inside off guard. A high school friend of mine lost his father in a midnight home invasion. His father was shot in the head in bed as he slept. Another schoolmate lost his grandfather when a robber climbed over the wall and shot his grandfather in their backyard. My cousin's ex-boyfriend was shot through the neck and killed by home invaders when he managed to untie himself and tried fleeing the house. They ran after him and just outside the front door they got him. And then on the street. Rural Dirt Road. Where I live one family was held at gunpoint for three hours as their house was cleaned out. Just four houses away from me an old couple who own a bed and breakfast were tied up while the invaders cleaned out their house. One of them boiled water in the kettle and then poured it over the legs of the old man. This happened in 2019. When I was at university. I phoned one of my classmates right in the middle of a home invasion at his house. I phoned him because we were writing a test the next day and I needed some help understanding some of the math we would be tested on. He didn't answer the phone. Instead it was some angry sounding guy who screamed at me over the phone at the top of his lungs. I don't want to talk to you. And then hung up. I phoned the police thinking that someone had stolen my friend's phone. But never followed up. The next day at university my friend showed up with his leg bandaged. He told us about the home invasion. He was tied up with his mother. His father was overseas on a business trip. One of the criminals cut his calf with a machete. He managed to successfully escape to the neighbor's house though and phoned the police. And was told they were made aware earlier of a possible robbery at their address. By me. The police arrived not long after but upon realizing that my friend had escaped the invaders had left the property and so the police unfortunately did not catch them. Every so often you hear some good news. That a homeowner managed to successfully thwart an invasion by discharging their weapon. In a house one road away from me. A homeowner shot and hit an invader on their stairwell. The criminals managed to get away in a vehicle but there was a trail of blood leading down the stairs and outside the house. Hopefully the crook didn't make it and got dumped somewhere in a shallow grave by his accomplices. I inherited a shotgun and a pistol. Whenever I'm home alone the pistol does not leave my side and the shotgun is hidden a place where I can quickly grab it but no one will be able to find it. 1. I grew up around guns. 
My father owned guns and we were taught that they were not toys before we could ever use them. He required us to receive formal training in their use. I have grown up respecting them as tools. Point two. About 12 years ago, my wife, son and I were coming home from picking up two of my son's friends so they could spend the weekend with us. We came home to find two men robbing our house. I held the two thieves at gunpoint while my wife called the cops. We live in a rural town near a river and there is only one bridge across the river about 10 miles away. It took the cops nearly 20 minutes to get there. What would have happened if I wasn't armed I can't say. But I can say I am forever glad they chose to comply with my commands and didn't escalate the threat and I never was put in a position to have to fire to defend my livestock from predators. I was followed and had a gun pointed at me in broad daylight with my baby in the car. I never want to be in a situation where I can't defend myself again. Decepticons If you live in my neighboring city of Kennesaw, Georgia, you're required to have one. Per a law passed in 1982. I have two small children and a wife. Police are unreliable and I'd rather go to court than my children's funeral. I enjoy target shooting and like having the option to defend myself should the need arise. I tried throwing rocks at deer. I like venison. Deer are notoriously hard to catch with a rope. Especially at distance. With a properly sighted rifle. I've been able to harvest some delicious hot dogs. Jerky. And bacon at 100 yards safely. Their fascinating little things also plinking soothes the soul. I live and work in the hood. 1. Shooting is a very relaxing activity. 2. I like punching holes in pieces of paper at varying distances. 3. I hunt for food. 4. The history of firearms is pretty cool. Kind of like old cars. I am gay and have had death threats that listed the make and model of my car with places I frequented. So yeah I am not taking chances. I also find the art of marksmanship really fun. I would compete if it wasn't prohibitively expensive. Life. Aside from hunting and helping farming relatives defending their cattle. The following really drove the need home. 1. Working in high school a guy came at me with a knife to get into my workplace. Luckily my manager carried and was following me out and pulled his weapon. Guy stopped real quick. Point two. Shortly after high school, a 50 plus year old creeper waited behind the dumpster at work to jump a 15 year old coworker. The manager there also carried and ended that. Also real quick. Point three. Friend marries a woman with baggage. Her ex breaks into their place at night and attacks with a knife. He kept a gun on the nightstand and the ex ceased to be a threat. 4. Fast forward and my son's just been born and now I've taken the hint and got a gun. In a new city and a man breaks into our home. Got the drop and he tore off. Nobody died in any but number 3. But I know for a fact at this point that my military parents and grandparents were always right. Guns are tools. And like all tools, it's the person holding them that determines how good or bad the work done with them is. Edit. Since I've seen several comments with some misconceptions let me reiterate that three was a friend in. Not me and all were in three different areas over a large amount of time. I'm 37 and have moved around a lot and the more places you go the more you can get into strange circumstances. Open mouth smile. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Aircast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.